Hey there, Squirrel Army! How's it going? Today, you guys have again voted um, for what we're doing with the Commander Masters um, cards. I'm going to have a bit of a look at right now just the rares and mythics since... A lot of things here are pretty similar in the number of votes they all got, except for the the other, because no one <laughs> voted for that, apparently, I don't know, but whatever. It's only one vote more for the discussion, and a review discussion, six of one, half a dozen the other, ranking... It's sort of a discussion, but I just give them a value, like A, S, B, whatever. So, we're just going to go through them. We're going to start with the Mythics. Now, I'm including the Commander deck reprints. Now, we're not going to go through the new cards, which, like, there's three or four of from each deck, I think. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, we're going in alphabetical, because that's just easiest. I am going to use these prices that they're giving as a guide as well. So, just to give you all the context. Alright, so... First off is Ajani. Uh, I would say we I'll rank Ajani as far as a reprint as a C. I don't think it's that amazing. I don't think it's terrible. Um, I think some people might play this Ajani. It is worth, you know, about between eight and six bucks, so, you know, that's, that's not too bad, it's not, you know, a 50 cent, you wouldn't be horrible to get it, it'll still be a four dollar card, maybe, with this reprint, so, mm, not too bad, like, not great, but, Certainly not what you're really looking for, but hey. Um, all this dust is just in the Commander decks, I think. Um, I don't think it's actually in the set. Um, but still, it's a really good reprint for a lot of decks that do need the, this sort of thing. And, you know... Uh, it's floating at about $5 at the moment for the new print. Um, and about, what, 6 to, or oh, 7 to 8 bucks thereabouts for other prints of it. Though those prints may have gone down a bit since the reprint, but still, mm, Ranking this one, I might say that it's C plus or B minus. It's not as bad as what a Johnny is, I don't think. You can join the Squirrel Army by subscribing as a pool because that's what you're looking for here. Even though, again, it's in the commander deck, so whatever. You're not going to get it in packs, so whatever. As a pull, you're obviously not going to pull it, but whatever. For the set in general, that's what we're looking at. We're looking for are these cards that we're going to pull worth the value. Um, so I guess this one wasn't one's worth talking about, but whatever. It's in the set, kind of, so we have to kind of talk about it, so whatever. The Arch Fiend. Wow. What the heck? The price on this is really high. I'm probably feeling like 
this will go down, way down, when the price, or when the uh, actual boxes and whatnot are all get opened. It'll probably be down to about that mid-20s mark or maybe $20 mark. Um, so, again, probably about mm, a B, I would say. I'm not a huge fan of this because it's, you know, 8 mana. And at 8 mana, you could be just winning the game. So, a card like this doesn't really make me feel like you're getting that. Again, it's not too bad for casual decks, but or really casual decks below precon decks and whatnot. But are you really going to fork out 30 odd dollars for a card like this when, yeah, I don't know. It's a decent, okay card, certainly. But I think Magic as a whole has kind of moved away from a lot of this. Um, type stuff, so it's it's kind of a sticky situation sometimes to assess cards like this, but it is cool, certainly, and I just love the art and everything, but still, it's tough sometimes to have things like this, and this is actually the type of card that I would like. I do wish sometimes Magic was back to these kind of things where, you know, your eight drop, you know, can sit out there for four or five turns and do stuff, but it's not the world we kind of live in anymore. So, yep, I <laughs> know. Still decent. All right. Avison. Avison has been a bomb for years. Again, still same sort of stuff, you know. I like. Having have my stuff have indestructible, that's okay. But again, I think Magic's moved on from a card like this. Certainly for the price that you're probably looking to get from this. Yeah, mid-40s. Wow. And like I say, it's funny how cards like this are representative of how magic used to be and things like that. So it is interesting that, you know, people still see value in these sorts of cards. Maybe if you're in the right deck and you're just like, well, I'm hoping that it, you know, survives a turn so I can untap and then just start Armageddoning everyone or Wrath of God in everyone all, all the time. So you're just running a Wrath deck um, with all your stuff, all your angels and humans and white good stuff or whatever. Maybe I don't look at it like that because I would rather be trying to do fun, more interesting stuff than cross my fingers, hope no one exiles it or get rid of it somehow and, you know, makes my life pain and misery like I'm trying to make theirs, but whatever. Still a very decent pull, so you wouldn't be unhappy pulling it, though I'm not sure. Oh, no, it definitely is in the set. Yeah, sometimes I forget what's in the set and what's in the commanders, so you have to bear with me here sometimes. Balefire, this, I thought last time this dropped much more than what it obviously has. Still in the mid-20s to $20 or so. Amazing, in my opinion, again. Another card that's very much of this is how magic used to be. Like, now this needs haste. Like, it needs haste like it needs water or the sun or anything else. Like, in today's magic, this just wouldn't be good enough. Or it isn't even 
good enough. So it's just one of those things, like, we're, we're all playing much more powerful magic than what this is and what this does. Not to say that it can't do anything, but just, again, it's funny. Like, it's it's a weird set of, set of situations that we all find ourselves in. It does deal six damage to all your opponent's stuff when it hits your opponents. So that's not bad. Sort of a board wipe as well. Again, I'd say it's maybe a B or a B minus. Certainly for the price now, though, if it was still holding a little bit more price, you know, you'd be a little bit more happy to pull it. But it's not terrible but again again you probably don't want it <laughs> mostly um so yeah bribery i didn't think it was so low honestly i don't actually think bribery is all that good but that's me um i'd rather have bribery on a stick or bribery the enchantment or whatever you know, something that you can repeatedly do rather than this one-off random spell. Um, I don't know. That's just me. I prefer consistency, being able to do things multiple times and whatnot, rather than just having a one-for-one -one from the most part, even though, like, swords and whatnot is all one-for-one, -one, but still that's one manner. Um, most of the time, whatever. So, big difference from, you know, a five-minute spell to do a one-for-one. One. So, no. But anyway, I'd say this is probably floating in the same area, B- minus to C plus area. Um, sitting up at probably between, like, 10 to 14 dollars or so probably upon release so i'm just guessing that um yeah not horrible but probably not the top tier of pools it's calyx um is i thought calyx was a one dollar oh actually the um alternates like two or two one and a bit so yeah this is a bad one i don't know whether to give it a d but i reckon it's about a d uh you definitely just don't want to pull this especially for a mythic um i think this actually is just in the commander deck so certainly you probably not pulling it except for like collector end so but whatever it is what it is jangu i don't mind it wow the price on this wow port it was last in portal three kingdoms wow Certainly for the price and the fact that it hasn't been reprinted in absolutely forever, yeah, you won't be disappointed to grab it. It's not a card I'm particularly fond of. Um, I don't think it's good enough, but that's me. Again, I don't like these one-off effects. Um... Though, like, Time Walk is obviously really good. But then again, you've got Explore that is basically the same thing. So, I don't know. Um, <laughs> it's one of those things. But, yeah, I don't know. You certainly can see that it has value. Up in that 44 to $45 the moment so that could fluctuate i would say that this is probably a b plus um pool just due to the price that it's floating at and the potential um of it being 
and the fact that it sort of hasn't been re-repented forever, so might be well worth it. I don't think, I don't know, we're going to be a few forever, man. Sorry if this one's going to be long, but there's a lot of cards to go through. Kandra, um, what do we got here? Wow, eight bucks. Wow, the promos are, aren't too bad. So I would say that this, this is probably maybe five to seven bucks, maybe at the top. I wouldn't say it's more than that. Not a terrible one, again, but actually it's pretty good in certain decks, certainly, like Torbrun, stuff like that. Um, but it's pretty much your end of curve for a lot of those decks, I would say. But again, I'm never a fan of Planeswalkers, that's just me, but whatever. I think this actually is in the Commander deck, so again, you know what, probably going to pull it, but still, I'd say that this is probably a C pull. You don't really want to pull it, but it's not the worst. The other Kandra, we've got two Kandra. Ah, uh, this is probably a D. Like, it's pretty good as it's as a card, but... For the price that you're going to get it for, or value you're in your pack, again, I don't know if even in this, this isn't packs, I don't know, except for the collector-based packs, whatever. But it's still, whatever. If you do pull it, you're going to be unhappy, because it's not worth enough, so. Um, crater Hoof. Now... Crater Hoof, despite being an expensive card and some people saying a good card, um, I'm going to rank it a bit lower than, than that because I actually don't think it's that amazing. Yes, it does win games here and there, but it also can whiff hard. Um, and that's its only trick. It can only win games in certain circumstances. So you've got to be doing fairly well as it is to kind of get this to do a whole lot of anything. Yeah, the haste is nice and all that, blah, blah, blah. But honestly, it it's one of those cards. Again, it's a great card from Magic's Pass. Yes, it a mana, it does win you the game, so that I actually agree with it. But if it was, if it was another card that did more and was for less, I'd be more interested in it. But certainly, we're talking about it being a pull in your pack, so I guess this has to be an A minus. It's probably not the top tier, certainly, and looking at the price, they're going down to about twenty-seven, twenty. Uh, $30 or so, so yeah, not the highest, um, not the lowest, but still floating in there, so could be okay, Paul. Demonic Tudor, amazing. I'm going to give this mm, an A+, plus, I think. It's been reprinted a few times recently, so I don't feel like giving this an S or anything higher than A. So, again, it's tough. It's still floating in there at the $30 odd mark, and you will be so happy to pull this. Even if you don't want it, it's such a valuable and powerful and sought-after card that you, again won't be disappointed. Like Crater Hoof, you won't be too disappointed, but eh, I don't know. Call oh well deploy the gate watch, whatever. I don't think this is gonna crack much. I'm gonna give it an F because it's just not gonna be worth anything. So 
Yeah, you're going to be real mad if you pull that. Doubling season. Jeez. Um, this one might be a bit tough too, because honestly, I don't know. Doubling season's a bit of an odd card. It's another oddball card that, I don't know, it's kind of hard for me to think about this card sometimes because I think Divergent Strategy, which is what this card does, isn't actually honestly a good thing. So what that means is you either want to be one of them. So yeah, yeah, you want to be one strategy or the other. You don't want to be both most of the time, so it really limits the decks that it can go in. Aside from that, it's certainly a good pull, so I have to rank it pretty high just due to the fact that for one reason or another, it's pretty popular, which I don't understand. I think, like, if you're a token deck, you want power lives and not need procession, cards like that. Mon deck, pretty good. Um, if you're a counters deck, you want hardened scales and things like that. So, mm, it's often this card that I go... Well, I've just got a bunch of other cards that do effectively the same thing and are cheaper in mana cost, so I don't know. Plus, doubling season's a big investment at five mana, so it's kind of tough to do anything with it a lot of the time unless you're really well set up, so... Hmm, I don't know, but that's just me. I've found that it's always a big target because, yeah, it can do stuff, certainly. Um, but, yeah. But anyway, certainly you won't be unhappy, so I would think this will be in the probably 50 odd dollar range. At least, so I would have to say that it's an A. Elspeth, I don't even think I need to look at this, but whatever. Yeah, I'm going to give it a D. Not very good in terms of price. I don't know if this is in the Commander to Dex or whatever. I don't care, um, because, again, it's just too hard to remember what's in where most of the time. So, whatever. You wouldn't be happy to open it, really. Erebus, not terrible card, honestly. Um, I'm surprised some people don't play it more and it's not more desired in certain strategies, like aristocrats and stuff like that. Uh, pretty decent, actually. Enchantment doesn't get destroyed most of the time. Especially when you're in that sort of sack deck, um, and especially when you have all your pingers and whatnot, um, and stuff that gains your life, etc. So, um, yeah, you certainly pretty decent in those decks. It draws you lots of cards, gets you more gas. Actually, I think it's pretty underrated, honestly, but. The price doesn't really bear that out, so it's probably going to maybe be a couple of bucks at the most. So, in some ways, it's a budget sleeper, so I might give it some points for that. I think I might give it a C, because it's actually a pretty darn deep... Actually, I might even get a B minus or something. It's a pretty darn decent card, but... Its price doesn't bear out how kind of good it is. So if you keep hold of it and ever build an Aristocrats deck, you'll be happy Yeah, have it, you know. Or even if you keep it in your bowl, you know. Might be all right. 
extra planar lens. It's probably going to... Oh, yeah, it's saying it's falling in the, the $20 mark. Here we go. So that's not too bad. Probably not the best. I'm going to give it a C plus, maybe B minus. Again, I'm not sure where this is, is if it's in the commander decks or whatever. But still, it wouldn't be the worst pull, but not the best, obviously. Finale, don't think it's too bad, but certainly uh, in the price, we've got between $20 and $25 or so. The price isn't really backing it up. So it's certainly a decent card. It's a lot like Freighter Hoof, often wins the game. Um, yeah. But you've got to invest 12 mana to it uh, to really win the game. Um, but it's not a bad tutor um, for something. So I've seen people tutor. What is it? Not Arbor Elf. What is it? Dried Arbor with this sort of thing. So I don't know. Certainly there is potential here. So I might say this is kind of a B, maybe a B minus. Just the price might be a little bit low um, for you to for you to feel like you've got your money out of your pack. So but not a bad card. Certainly I'd hold on to it. I think four seconds in the um, commander decks. Oof, that price five bucks. That's not not the worst, but in terms of cards you want to pull, you probably don't want to pull it. I'd give it a C. I'd say not terrible card, but I think we're just gonna have time for mythics in this one. Um, unfortunately, but whatever. Keep going as much as we can. Um, Gideon? No. F. Just F. Not worth your time. Wor one of the worst pulls you could get. Again, I'm not figuring out where it is. Um, Grave Pact? Again, if you're in that Black Aristocrats deck, pretty decent between... The mid 20s so that's not too bad i'd say it's a b minus or maybe a c plus in there it's not the best not the worst so middle of the road ish helioid not even oh no two bucks okay f i'd say or maybe d minus you don't want to pull this again You'll be very sad. Um, we've got double helioid. At least this one is worth kind of something still in that mid teens kind of price range. So I'd say it has to be a C minus. It's a very good card in the right deck. Certainly combos with a lot of things, but again, just you have to have the right things so it's one of those things that yeah you can look at and go yeah this is a good card but the price isn't here for it maybe that's due to reprints not too sure maybe it's due to how many were printed i'm not too sure but certainly maybe should be a bit more but yeah you might be a little disappointed unless you really want it for sort of deck or something. Um, yeah. Insurrection. This is another old card that I don't think is good enough anymore. I haven't seen anyone play it in years and years. Um, and I haven't even seen someone play the other one, whatever it's called. That you either choose to get everything power four greater or three or less. 
can't remember the name right now. And that one's like half the mana cost of this one or whatever it is. Uh, um, so yeah, I don't see this being a big pull for a lot of people though. The price is kind of floating around 10 bucks there for most of the other prints. So I'd say it might float around 10 bucks. So it's not the bottom of the barrel, so I might say it's a C minus. Not the mythic you wanna see. So many Jaces. My god. Um F <laughs> Jace Architect. Terrible. Not worth anything. Um Jace Balerin. Say C minus. Not worth a lot. Two bucks. Mirror Mage, Jace, how much are you? D minus, bro. D. D or D minus. All right. Jeweled Lotus. A, I think. This is probably one of those mythics you really want to pull. It's worth a lot. Very high in demand. So, yeah. In no matter what I think, like, some of that does play into it, but you've got to go with what the metagame overall is doing and whatnot. Wow, Cauldre is only like three bucks? Wow. Wow. This is, this is a good card for certain decks, but again... That equip cost is brutal. Um, you certainly don't want to ha have to pay full price for it. Though it is less in lots of ways than culture, getting the whole culture and whatnot. But still, mm. so mm, I'm going to say D. Not very good as a pool, honestly. Not a bad card, but... Goslek, wow. Are you kidding me? This thing is down to like eight bucks or what? I mean, again, another card that symbolizes old magic. You know, fits back in there. It's actually all right if you're in the right deck, but, you know, it usually helms that deck. Um,. But, again, Magic's just getting more and more competitive. And with a deck like this, you're usually drawing, you know, a bunch of Mana Rocks or a bunch of other Eldrazi. So what are you going to counter? Like, I don't know. Is anyone running 10 Mana spells or whatever? You know, not really. So you've got to get lucky and then pitch your Mana Rocks. So then you can't. Friggin' get out any of your other Eldrazi and whatnot. Um, I don't know. That's just me. I don't know. Anyway, seven bucks there. That is insane. I thought it'd be more than that. Might tip up to about ten bucks, maybe. Not too sure. Um, so that's not really good. You don't want to open this, I don't think, unless you really want it for a deck um, or whatever. It's not going to make up your pack value, so that's the main point here. So I'd say this has got to be a C at best. Um, yeah, bit sad there. Yeah, we're definitely only getting through the rares and barely that. Um, we're going to be going for a while. Yeah, um, land tax. I'm so sad about land tax, actually. Land tax used to be kind of all right. I don't think it's all right anymore. But the price is right there. It's in the mid-20s to 30s, maybe. So it's not a terrible pull. I still don't understand this being that good most of the time. 
<sighs> but it is, I guess, kind of draw three. I don't know. And that, I guess, is what you can get with this. You won't ever miss land drops, so that is sort of powerful, but I've always thought that it's not nearly that good, honestly. I don't know. That's just me. The River Tears. Wow. I didn't think this was worth so much. Is this actually a... I don't know. It is a reprint. Wow. Portal 3 Kingdoms. Wow. A lot of Portal 3 Kingdoms cards. Um, mid-30s, far as price, so not a horrible pull. Might say this is a B. Yeah, I'll go B. Machias. Remember when Machias was like 30 to 50 bucks? Bro. What the heck? I mean, that's what a lot of reprints will do for card. And it is good for card prices to come down so that when you buy them, they're cheaper. But obviously, when you're opening stuff, you're not getting that value that you kind of need to make up the investment that you're putting into packs. Not that this is a bad card. So, mm, certainly I don't think you'd be that mad with this, especially if you do want it for a deck or whatever. And a lot of people are looking for this for decks, so... Mm, so I might give it a B. Marari Wake? Wow. Down to four bucks. Used to be a pretty decent card in terms of value. Uh, certainly those days are gone, I think. Again, shows you what reprints do. I think you'd be kind of sad to open it. It's not a terrible card, certainly, but I think there are just better cards out there that do more for you than what this does. So I honestly don't think you need a card like this in most decks. Um, but yeah, you'd certainly might be happy to open it for the price either. So might give it a C. It can fit in some decks, but mm. Marapol. We're looking at two bucks. Give this a D, bro. You're not going to be happy to, to open that. Um, what is Morophon at? Nearly 20 bucks. Wow. Now, this is before release, so again, some of these prices might be in flux soon, so we'll wait and see. But again, you might not be most sad to open it, especially if you're looking for a deck. But still, I might give it a C plus, maybe. Nahiri. Oh, bro. Bro. Like, you've got a, like, $1 card, F. Narset. Wow. Like, one dollar card, bro. F. Not going to be worth a lot, probably. Other than that, I said, lots of the same character here. Wow, another dollar. I'd give this an F. Not going to be happy to open that. Neheb, free darn good card. Wow, still 14, 15 bucks. That's really good for the amount of times this has been reprinted. Um, very good, good card. So I might give this a B. 
so much stuff. Oblivion Sawa. Wow, two bucks. F, bro. F's in the chat. Oobnath. Down to... Um, about five, six bucks or so. So you're not going to be happy to open it. So I might give it a C minus. Vault, a dollar F, F in the chat. I don't think Trader Forms worth a lot. No, F, F bro, F. <coughs> Perforos, still very, very good card. This is one of the most best cards for red decks, red aggro decks, token decks, just any decks that have red and want to do lots of damage to your opponents. Very difficult to get rid of. Um, looking at mid-20s maybe... High teens, maybe twenty dollars. Don't know. So not the worst. Might give it a B minus. Razakev. This used to be a cool card. I guess it's still cool, but fifteen under fifteen dollars. So not at the bottom of the barrel, but. Probably wouldn't be too happy to open it. It's again card from the past that used to be good. It only really does something at the top of your curve. If you're not cheating this thing in, it's probably not worth it most of the time. Um, so it only fits in very specific decks that can really like cheat it in and whatnot so mm. so I'd say it's probably C plus maybe B Savage B between probably 15 to 20 bucks maybe extra combat effectively I'd read this as an extra turn um yeah, double strike is effectively an extra combat too. So, entwine doing both, two extra turns. Um, hmm. The price is kind of okay, so I might give it a B minus. Samala, fifteen bucks too. So another B minus. Very good card, card though. So. You wouldn't be too happy, unhappy to. You wouldn't be too unhappy to pull it. Um, the Hive Lord. Wow, he's actually gone way up. He's probably gonna settle back down. About that twelve-ish dollar mark. So, not horrible right now, but probably will be worse. Um, on release or just post release so you might be a bit sadder uh, come release with it so might give it C plus maybe unless again you're looking for a deck uh, Smither and Tide remember when this was 40 bucks think <laughs> Again, it is good it's cheap, but now you don't want to pull it because it's so cheap. It's not worth hardly anything. About 20 bucks, probably, maybe 25 in there somewhere. So, not the bottom of the barrel, but probably B minus territory now, which is crazy. Um, Soul of Phyrexia, F bro, just F's, F's in the chat. Spellseeker, hmm, we're looking probably at about 
maybe between teens and twenties. So not horrible. Let's give it a C plus. Um, Starfield. Wow, it hasn't been reprinted in a long time, but still it hasn't really got a lot of price. Though it hasn't really lost a lot. Hmm. Still sitting there at eleven, twelve dollar mark. So it's holding its price pretty good. Hmm. Might give it a B minus. Pretty decent card. Wow, one page. We're on the last page at last, at least there's that. Sun Quan Lord of Wu. I like horsemanship to a degree. It's an old mechanic, but a pretty good one. Basically, and can't be blocked, mostly. So, there's a few things that do that, effectively. I don't think the price tag's gonna stick. It's a pretty good card, but honestly, it's not that good. And yeah, there are some decks that might want it, but mm. but again, right now you wouldn't be too unhappy to pull it upon release. Probably it'll go down a little bit, but still, I'd give it a B right now. The Chain Veil. Probably going to sit in that mid-twenties mark, so not too bad. Probably a B-minus area. You wouldn't be too unhappy, but you wouldn't be thrilled. Great Hinge. Bro, this is one of the best cards they ever printed still, I think. Sitting at that $40, it might go down a bit, maybe mid-thirties. Um, but still, it's super powerful, super useful. Um, you definitely wouldn't be sad to pull it. Maybe B plus or A minus territory. Not the top card that you might want to pull, but it's certainly right up there. Mortal Sun. Mid teens, so that's not horrible. Maybe a B minus. A little bit out of the way from Dexon now, but still. Scarab God. Scarab God's actually super good, but it's amazed me how this guy has held his price no matter how many printings he's had. That just shows you how good this guy is and how many people go, oh yeah, this guy's still really good. Um, so, yeah. Definitely wouldn't be the worst pull. I'm actually going to give it a B because it's held its price pretty well um, despite the number of reprints it's had. Alright, Ur Dragon. Wow, mid 40s, so that might go down a bit, but I don't know, probably might cap at 40, don't know. Um, so I'd say this is right up there, this is probably an A minus, maybe an A. You wouldn't be too sad to pull it, certainly. Twilight Prophet's a pretty darn good card, honestly. Um, Seven, eight backs, though, doesn't bear that out. So it certainly wasn't horrible price before, about 15 bucks, but certainly this reprints pulled it right down. Um, I'd say it's a C plus, maybe B minus. Very good, good card, though. Ulamug, mid 30s, maybe, or maybe high 20s here at the end of the day so that's pretty decent you probably wouldn't be the worst off for pulling it i'll give it a b plus for a pull and we're at the end last one for now i'll do the rest separately because this has gone way too long 
So sorry about those, but thank you if you have stayed this long. Um, Urza, last one, pretty darn good card. Everyone knows this guy's busted. Um, 15-ish bucks or under 15 bucks there. Mmm, holding his price pretty all right. It's actually a bit up, so it's probably going to drop back down to that $10, $11 mark. Um, it's a really good, good card. So the price doesn't bear out how good it might be. So, yeah, I wouldn't be the worst off for it, but the price isn't there super duper for it. So I might give it a B minus. And that is it. I can't be bothered doing the rares. It'll take forever. I'm sure you guys don't want to see that right now. But if you do want to see it, it'll be in a future video. I might even do commons and uncommons if you guys really want to see it. Um, so let me know if you want to see that. Write your thoughts down there in the comments below. I might even really skim over the best ones or whatever. So we don't have to go through everyone. But anyway, hope you have enjoyed. Hope you'll join me in the next one.